talk about zeta function like sums of Luca numbers. As usual, we're going to take the speaker out for dinner at 6.45 at Evelyn's restaurant. If you'd like to join us, uh, please let me know immediately after the talk. Okay, so, hello, my name is William Kang, and I'm a current junior attending the Burke County Academies in Hackensack, and today I'll be giving you a presentation about my project, titled being Zeta Function Like Sums Over Lucas Numbers, and I also want to share with you a journey from where I started, what I actually did, and how I ended up. So, one of the main things I wanted to look at was, first of all, I started off looking at the Fibonacci numbers, and I started to think, what can we do with Fibonacci numbers? How many places can we apply this fact to? And I saw that there was a variety of areas from the golden ratio of 1.618. And then I saw that in economics and finance, we saw in such a variety of areas such as trading algorithm and for the foreign exchange markets. And these slight characteristics of the Fibonacci numbers continue to appear in our everyday life. So what I study today is a following type. So previously, they've researched on Fibonacci numbers of the following expression, where S is a positive real number. And instead of the Fibonacci numbers, I study the Lucas numbers instead. <coughs> and so the Lucas numbers are a, variety, uh, are a variation of the Fibonacci numbers. They do have the similar recurrence relation where the sum of the two consecutive terms leads to the next term. However, the difference is that as you can see, the first two terms are different. The Fibonacci numbers started with one and one here, and also one and three for the Lucas numbers. So what originally really inspired me was my friends, my peers, my alumni, who were studying in such a variety of areas in my school physics, astronomy, like astronomy, biology, chemistry, and I thought for myself at that time, what can I be doing at this moment to apply my favorite area and my strongest subject to further knowledge and further findings? And I knew that my most ideal place to study would be in the area of mathematics. And conveniently at the time, having studied the sequences along with the Fibonacci numbers, I found that it was a perfect place to start. So what really triggered my motivation was the Fibonacci quarterly, which I had begun to read quite often. And one of the main findings that I found was from Otsuka and Nakamura, two Japanese mathematicians who actually studied the following in 2009. But at the time when this research was done, Otsuka was actually a high school um, student uh, under the professor, the mentor of Nakamura. So this is a, a quantity that they studied. So what they did was they, they found what this floor function converges to, and they found that depending on the parity of n, it would approach fn minus 1 fn minus 2, or fn minus 2 minus 1, and also for when s equals 2 for the square, what it approaches. And I saw that not only them, but also others have done similar types as well, similar variations with the hyper Fibonacci numbers. And that is Professor Lu and Zhao, also in 2012. And then I started to realize, huh, this isn't like an old topic, and it's being studied from 2009 and 2012, and mathematicians are coming back to it and studying it again and again. And I said, maybe I can do something about this, and maybe I can do further research and change what they've been doing and study more about it. So here's the two questions I started to study. What happens if the numbers, perhaps s equals 1 and s equals 2, get larger and larger? What about 3, 4, 5, the positive integers? Because when s equals 1 and s equals 2, you can easily predict what the expression converges to because they're fairly easy to see. So then I thought maybe it would be more difficult and it would need a different approach. And I thought maybe I could try finding that. And also, I noticed that they've been taking just the integer portion, the floor function of everything. And I said, what if I can find a deeper estimate, more close, precise estimate, by not doing the floor function, but finding the exact tail estimate to the decimal place? So those are the two questions I decided to um, study. Now you can see here, I just want to give you a brief view of my results and how complicated the things get compared to the results I've just shown you. And I'll notice that when s gets larger and larger, it's obvious that the expressions become more increasingly more complicated. And of course, it'd be more difficult to find for cases 5, 6, and also 7. Of course, my method that I used did work for all the cases. And I, although, it's a, although it's difficult to find an exact formula for this, because there's a, we need to use different identities for each individual one, the method was still the same. And that's what I found throughout my project. So one of the most important aspects to study was the Lucas identities in this project. Because when, when I was trying to do the project without the Lucas identities, I got to a point where I found an expression twice, three times longer than what I've just shown you. And when I actually tried to prove it, I said, you know what, 
I give up. I can't do this anymore. This is impossible to find. And I said, what, why do we need L of 2K, L of 3K, L of 6K? Why do we need all of that? Maybe I can condense that into some simpler form. And that simpler form was by converting everything into LN and LN minus 1. And that's what the Lucas identities allowed me to do. So the Lucas identities, I realized that I could use them from converting everything with the relations between the Lucas identities and the Fibonacci identities. And what I did was a following. So I'm going to write a few things on the board where... Okay, so for the Fibonacci numbers, we have that f of 0 here equals 0, f of 1 equals 1. And I'm going to show you the difference between what the Fibonacci and the Lucas numbers were to show you just the relations of how everything went. Okay, so the Binet's formula allowed me to say the following. And for the Lucas numbers, it was quite similar, but slightly different. As you can see, that this is variation. Of course, and the alpha and the beta values are from the root characters of the equation x squared equals x plus 1. And alpha value being 1 plus root 5 over 2, and beta being 1 minus root 5 over 2. And now what was important for me to do was say, okay, now we have this, so alpha plus beta would equal 1, alpha minus beta would equal root 5, and also alpha times beta equals minus 1. And this becomes important, and I'll get to that later when the time comes. And first of all, I want to prove a few identities that were important to me that I used most often throughout my project. So one of the main identities that I used was ln equals f of n minus 1 plus f of n plus 1. Of course, I didn't want to just use it because I was just unsure that my project may turn out different. So I decided, okay, let's try proving this. So I took all these values and I pretty much used what I've just shown you here and tried to prove it with the alpha and the beta values. So what happened was alpha n minus 1 minus beta to the n minus 1 over alpha minus beta and it's just connected, plus alpha n plus 1 minus beta to n plus 1. Okay, and what does that equal? That would, I started from the right side, and that would equal alpha to the n plus beta to the n. Because alpha and beta, the bottom becomes 1 anyways. So I said, okay, let's move alpha minus beta to the other side, and let's multiply it out. And I said, this expression on the top becomes alpha to the n, plus beta to the n times alpha minus beta. So what is that? That's alpha to the n plus 1 minus beta alpha to the n plus alpha to the beta n minus beta to the n plus 1. And now what I did was alpha times beta equals negative 1. And you'll eventually be able to find that the expression becomes alpha to the n plus 1 plus alpha to the n minus 1 minus beta to the n minus 1 minus beta to the n plus 1. Now we can check here, okay, so we have alpha to the n minus 1 here, check. And alpha to the n plus 1 minus alpha to the n minus 1 and minus alpha to the n plus 1. And I saw that, okay, the left and the right side indeed do match, and that's pretty much how I proved it. So this is important for me because well, this was actually important for proving the other identities, in a sense, that the alpha and the beta values and this expression became important for understanding the identities that I used to actually find the variety of the other identities. Yeah, can so, you a comment? This is a beautiful proof, but it's another proof. It's Albergo's type proof. You want to check it from three cases. Uh -huh. Zero and zero and equals one equals two. And it also would be a proof. Mm -hmm. My good proof is nice. <laughs> and also, what I did was f of n equals alpha to the n plus 1 plus alpha to the n minus 1 over 5. So essentially I did the same here. So I rewrote that with what I just found as f of n plus f of n plus 2 plus f of n minus 2 plus f of n. 
over 5. And now we group them together like terms, and we get 2fn plus, and we write this as f of n plus 1 plus f of n, and also this as f of n minus f of n minus 1. Okay, and then we finally are able to get that there's 4fn plus, there's fn plus 1 and fn minus 1, and by you can rewrite that as f of n. Hence, it becomes f of n. So with this similar methods, I was able to find that, check the other identities as well. And later, um, one of the main identities that I used was actually the Vecini's identity, which I'll be explaining soon. So we see here that these identities, for example, if you want to find, using the first identity we have here, let's say we want to find L of 2n, let's say. So we put in m for n, and we'll be able to find that L2n equals Ln plus 1 f of n plus Ln times f of n minus 1. And that's similar way, the other identities that I used were derived as well. And notice that the expressions are a lot simpler than or what you can imagine, like 2k, 3k, 4k's, and that's how I pretty much reworded everything. And so these are the identities that I used. Uh, these are some of them you see here, L of 2k, which was used for case 2, and L of 3k for case 3, L of 4k, L of 5k, and L of 6k. And you can see here that again, this is L of k's and L of k minus 1. And that's why I was able to combine a lot of things together and be able to find shorter and easier expressions that I can later prove them with. Now this is the actual meat of my presentation. Let me go on to actually how I actually got these results. Okay, so what I did was use the Maple software, and I actually never knew about the Maple software until when my professor told me about it, that he was using this kind of software to actually do everything. I was in fact trying to use simply paper calculator, mm -hmm. and my teacher said, okay, what you're doing is absurd. If you're gonna write that by hand and try to calculate everything, this is not gonna work. If you can find an infinite sum by hand, Tell me, bring me anyone, I'll give it an award. And like he said, okay, so you have the loop, you have the Maple software here, and it's going to be a lot more convenient for you to use. So as you can see, I defined the Luca sequence first, L of 0 and L of 1, and the Luca sequence. Now what I want to do here, of course I don't want to evaluate from n to like infinity because we don't want the system to be adding and adding. Uh, so we pretty much top, chop off at the tail end, which is the lower order terms, and we find this expression. So what I did was pretty much define something called S of n, which is the exact sum evaluated. And what I like about Maple especially is that when they spit out numbers in this fashion, in like a row, and I'm able to see the trend of the numbers and see the patterns easily. And for example, if I go down here, okay, so I said, so my previous goal stated that for case case one, if we the first order first first term will be ln, and for case two, L of two n. So I said, okay, if I was to make an educated guess, maybe I can divide that in SN evaluated value by L of 3n. And I found that, okay, this does work. And I got that it actually goes to a constant 0 0.7639. And of course, this is a way that I was able to find the coefficient because if it happened to be 2, I'd multiply by 2, and that way I was able to find, okay, this is the way I should be approaching this problem. But the only problem is, if I had this constant 0 0.7639, I don't want to write this whole thing as my constant and L3n because then it would, be, it would defeat the purpose of making this a lot easier and simpler. So this is what I did. So what I did was basically I got, actually I'll write this out, and so what I did was the following. But this basic method was the same for all the other cases, except the only difference was everything became a bit longer because the cases got a little more complicated. So what I did was, so when you divide the expression by L of 3n and you get 0 0.76, dot, 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 okay, so I'm going to call this a constant for now. So I called it perhaps, let's say, C1. Then it would be that if we get rid of the inverse from the expression that I showed in the problem, that would mean that the problem becomes 1 over ln cubed plus 1 over ln plus 1 cubed plus etc. And that becomes, because everything's flipped over, you get 1 over C1 times L3. Now what do I do with this? I then put in, got another equation by substituting n for n plus 1. And now we get 1 over ln plus 1 cubed plus dot 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 
and we get 1 over C1 times L3n plus 3. And because I wanted to get rid of everything in the middle of this chunk, I subtracted everything. And now we get everything starts canceling out, except now we have 1 over L and the third power that equals, we get 1 over C1, let's take it out, and 1 over L3n minus 1 over L3n plus 3. Okay, so I want to rewrite this as, so we have for L3n, we get L3n times L3n. And that will become L3n plus 3 minus L3n. Okay, and the purpose of doing this was because I wanted to isolate C1 by itself. So when we isolate C1 by itself, we bring this from the other side and we multiply it out by coming all the way over here and we multiply L and the power. And that whole expression becomes this. Okay, now here's the next step. I know this looks still a bit complicated, so what I did was find the limit of this. And by finding the limit of this, I was able to find what, if, what this expression converges to. So next what I want to show you is, I use the alpha and the beta values again here. And by actually using the alpha and the beta values, we're able to get an expression that consists of not just complicated expressions, but in terms of simpler numbers. So we have here again that alpha to the k equals alpha to the k plus beta to the k. And also, the important one I use is alpha times beta equals negative 1 in this case. And now we have that, we, if you cube all both sides, we get lk to the third power equals alpha to the 3k plus 3 alpha to k beta k plus 3 alpha beta to k plus beta to k. Okay, now what did I do here? Um, so I pretty much took this part this part, because alpha times beta equals negative 1, I rewrote it again. So that will become alpha to the 3k minus plus alpha, 3 alpha to the k times negative 1 to the k. And of course, that will be the same for here too. 3 beta to the k times negative 1 to the k plus beta to the 3k. Okay, now we're a step closer to what we actually want to find. And now we want to see that, okay, beta to the k so what we have is that beta to the k actually approaches zero eventually, and we say, okay, for an, for, and for an estimation, we can consider these zeros. And now we're left with this. So we're able to find that L of 3n, 3k plus 3, minus L of 3k equals alpha to the, k, alpha to the 3k plus 3, minus alpha to the 3k, plus, as I said, the lower order terms and it's for the sake of estimation. And so now what do I do here? Um, so actually this becomes this problem. So now we have alpha to the 3k from before. We write, we write the previous expression that I had in terms of the alpha and the beta values, but now we'll have alpha values only. And alpha to the 3k plus 3 minus alpha to the 3k from the expression we just found. And also on the bottom, it will be alpha to the 3k times alpha to the 3k plus 3. And now we can see here that, okay, let's take out alpha to the 3k from the expression right here. And, we're, and we end up simplifying everything to alpha cubed minus 1 over alpha to the power. Okay, now we have just the alpha values where we can plug in the actual alpha value, which is 1 plus root 5 over 2. And we find that eventually when we plug in and simplify and evaluate, we are able to find that the expression is indeed 3 minus root 5. Okay, so we have 3 minus root 5, but that's still difficult to use because when we're proving these expressions later, if we have radical 5 in there, it would be sort of difficult to use. So again, I want to simplify further and find a better expression for this instead of 3 minus root 5. And that similar case occurred for the other cases as well. So the next part will be using the following. So I have 3 minus root 5, so what I did was pretty much, I rewrote re 3 minus root 5 in terms of the alpha and the beta values. So for example, we'd have, okay, 3 minus root 5 times we have L3n. That's not something ideal we want to use. So what I did was I pretty much rewrite everything in terms of the 3 would be, so 1 plus, 
So three times one would be a different way to write three. So we write one is we write alpha plus beta. Minus and the, the radical five, we'd make it okay, alpha minus beta. And that whole thing multiplied by alpha to the k. And if we take a similar approach and we simplify once again, we'll be able to find that the actual expression in terms of and when we actually convert that back to using L of k equals alpha to the k plus beta to the k, and we're left with an expression in this sort of fashion, we're able to convert back and be able to find that this whole thing actually approaches 2L of 3 minus 2. Okay, now let's check that. So that was a way to write the first term in a lot simpler fashion, and we're able to find that, okay, now we see here that 3 minus 3 5, and when we simplify, we get this following. So, of course, the next step would be to use the second value. Yeah, so, 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 sorry. So, so, so the point seven six three nine. so that is exactly 3 minus mm -hmm. root 5. Okay. Yes. So I just wanted to evaluate, confirm again, that the 3 minus root 5 would be this um, number. So that was what I did to find the next terms as well. And, of course, the next terms get a bit more complicated. And we name again that, okay, so we have here, when we do the second term, we get the problem that when we get all these numbers, they start oscillating between, you can see here that negative, positive, negative, positive. Okay, the second factor must have something of a negative one to the k. And I said, okay, then also because perhaps that would be, if I divide by negative one to the n times L of n, we'll be able to find the result. And indeed, that was true. And now we can see here that by the pattern, the number, the new constant will be 1.605 with all this complicated numbers. So that I named as C2, and the way I found C1, I applied again and found C2. And now, that gets a lot more complicated, so I'll actually just move on, but what I did was, through all these, through Maple, I was able to find a simpler method of actually creating this expression in the end. That was, of course you can see here that it's a lot more complicated than 3 minus root 5. And what I did was, by using these numbers, I was able to find, again, the next term and the next term, Although this is where it actually ended, uh, the last term actually ended up being um, error term. And so I'll write this again that, so we have negative 36 over 11, okay. So we have this. The C2 will be C2 equals negative 36 over 11 plus 24 over 11 root 5 here. And that whole thing we can rewrite as, let's take out all relevant. And now we have, so we have negative 3 plus 2 root 5. Okay, and of course there was the L of n, so after the k. And now we take these numbers, and again, we can see a 3 here, 3 we times the 3 times alpha plus beta, and root 5 would be alpha minus beta. And we do that in similar fashion again, and because I don't want to repeat the same step again, so we eventually end up getting the following. 5L and minus 1, minus L and plus 1. Okay, so we found this, and the last step we were able to find that the error term was plus O times umbrella. And that big O represents negative 1 to the N to account for the plus or minus signs that I saw. So, this was how I found the other results for 2k, 3k, 4k, and all the other to 7k. Okay, and I, if I wanted to prove this here, so I wanted to prove that this expression indeed was true when I tried to use the idea of proof. So we, I see here that I defined xk and yk to be the following. So you notice that xk and yk are actually very similar to the actual expression that I found. The only difference is at the end, the error term. And that just shows that numbers are only different by the slightest decimal points. And I squeezed everything between this certain inequality, 1 over yk minus 1 over yk plus 1, and 1 over xk minus 1 over xk plus 1. So we saw, then what I did was I subtracted 1 over xk minus 1 over xk plus 1, and 1 over lk to the third power, and 1 over yk minus 1 over yk plus 1, because I wanted to see that, okay, these are such small numbers, I sort of want to verify that this inequality is true. And I found that when I actually subtract it here, this expression, the right minus the middle term, we get a slightly greater than zero by a few decimal points. And also, on the left side, we take the left minus the middle, we get a slightly less than zero. And I said, okay, so this inequality does work. 
So now let's actually get to the idea of proof. So what I did was substitute k for k plus 1. And now what we get here is we get on the next 1 over y k plus 1 minus 1 over y k plus 2. And the middle will be 1 over l k plus 1 to the third power. And now you notice here that there's negative 1 over y k plus 1 and the new 1 over y k plus 1. And when we keep adding that up infinitely, everything starts crossing out as telescoping sum. And we're left with 1 over y k and the last term and also the sigma that was inside the inverse here, that expression, and also the first and the last. And the last approach zero, so we only consider the first, first terms. And then we're finally left with this, this expression. So, because we wanted to get to the actual expression that I was trying to solve for, I said, okay, let's flip it again to the inverse. So I found the inverse, and I found that the actual expression here was actually very simple, uh, it was squeezed between xn and yn. So I found that, okay, this is a way to prove it, and if I take this method again for the other identities, other ones, I'll be able to do it again. And so the reason why you can see that the expressions here are no longer in like three k's, and all the expressions are in k and k minus one, that's the Although even, even with the identities, you can see that the numbers are getting quite complicated, and without them, just imagine how big it was, and especially doing it by hand. So now, what did I actually use? So I want to get a little bit into the Binet's formula as well. So the expression that I used a lot was L of k equals alpha to the k plus beta to the k. And the alpha and the beta values given, 1 plus root 5 over 2 and 1 minus root 5 over 2. And so we have this expression. OK, let's say that, OK, for case 3 again, if you plug in as for 3, we get that when we simplify, we'll end up at 2 of 3 and minus 2. And this was the exact idea of proof, the, the actual expression that I was trying to find. So we subtract it again, and with Maple, the first term, we were able to find the new constant, that with, which I've been showing before. And so pretty much we constructed xk and yk also as well. But for example, for xk, 1 over xk minus 1 over xk plus 1, from that inequality, we have to know that, OK, the right side has to be very similar to the middle term, 1 over LK to the third power, if we indeed want this to be a tight estimate. And because when we subtract, we want it to be like very close to nearly approaching zero. And we found that, okay, when we subtract, the expression becomes, let's say, n. n being this expression. And this has to approach zero. So now notice here that there are different orders, fourth, third, and second. So I took the highest order terms. And when we approach n approaches infinity, if the fourth powers, they approach zero, I said, okay, the n should approach zero. And if we're able to do that, we can, do, we can solve this. And then, of course, the, um, the C value, the constant again, that if we rewrite in terms of alpha and beta, we're able to get this expression. So that was the whole idea behind what I was trying to prove with Maple. And through that, I was able to prove, that the, prove the previous results that I've shown you. So overall, what I wanted to show is that the reason why I wanted to do this project in the first place was because I was inspired by my fellow teachers, classmates, and also my ambitions to strive further. And I saw that, okay, I know how to solve math, but I just, I feel like, I just felt like I knew so briefly about it, only the surface of mathematics. So I said, if I was to go further into this topic, maybe I'll be able to find more areas. And I know that mathematics, we can see that it's sort of not as applied as people say to like biology, chemistry, or physics. But I felt like, okay, we see that mathematics is everywhere, and we see that all these characteristics are behind all the things we do. And even in nature, we see, like, for example, uh, I, was watching, I was reading this article on how the Fibonacci characteristics were actually in the embedded surface of a uh, sunflower as well. And we see that all these slight things can make a difference. And I said, if we were to able to actually apply these things to further ideas with economics, architecture, and the golden ratio and everything, we have to be able to study further into the topic. And I hope that eventually, in the future, my project will not only cover the Fibonacci and the Lucas numbers, but the other uh, variation as well. But in general, I wanted to find for the general recurrence sequence, an plus 2 equals an plus 1 plus an. And be able to find for cases when s is not only just positive integers, such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, but what if that became a radical? And that would be a lot harder to find. But if I was able to find a way, that would also be a useful method. And today, I continue to strive and try to find other results and other various areas of sequences and other places that I can study in terms of mathematics. And thank you. Thank you for a wonderful experiment and talk. Uh, any questions? We have time.
So when, when you were um, 